Today, we're in Burlington, North Carolina, where John Parrish took a look at his dash cam and was shocked to see his Chevrolet Corvette out on the open road. It is Z06. I've never ridden in one that was like this new. What's up, guys? True Crime King back. How we doing this morning? Hope everybody's doing well. All right, so uh, we got some employees taking a a nice brand new Corvette two different employees taking it for a little joy ride right so let, let's see what they did here here we go Parrish is very proud, proud of his souped up, up and supercharged super Corvette. Corvette so growing so up, growing up um, um, I mean, I the mean, Corvette's always just, 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 for me, it's me, been, like, been, like, status symbol. symbol. And, and then and something about just about the specific, specific white, white exterior, exterior red, red interior, interior, just... just yeah, I mean, everybody wants to own a nice car, right? I mean, I'd like to have a Corvette, right? In August, he took the car to the modern Chevrolet to have some routine maintenance done. And on at least two occasions while the car was there, workers took it out for a spin. It, just from looking at the video and on all the footage and stuff like that, um, I would have to say that they, they definitely went over 100, uh, if not close to 110, 120. And real quick, so how didn't these guys see the dash cam, right? These employees, I guess either they didn't see it, right, or they didn't care. Or both. I don't know. What do you guys think? Or maybe it was uh, kind of hidden. Maybe he did it, this on purpose. Maybe we'll find out. Um, and as you can see in that video, it's you, you know they pass a forty-five mile an hour speed limit sign. During the first joyride, one of the workers uses the car to pick up another person. The commentary made me think, think that he's done similar things to that before. The worker, worker takes, takes the unidentified, unidentified woman for a quick, quick trip, trip up and down, down the road. road. She, she quickly, quickly points, points out that they're, that they're on tape. Yeah, yeah, I, I, it's from something and everything. Do you know, you know, the person Okay, so, <laughs> if the guy didn't know that there was a dash cam filming him, then... This girl points it out, and he keeps going, right? Just so stupid. I mean, and then this isn't a, this is more than a joyride, right? I mean, he's picking up girls. Uh, they're going. I mean, the boss of this place. I mean, he, this guy's got to be gone for at least what a half hour, at least to an hour or more right I mean usually if you're just test driving something uh, you know you, you just go around the block a couple times or something right you're not going hours or or an hour right it seems like they're just I don't know overwhelmed by the car, like they don't drive, drive that, that type, type of car too often, often. Uh, which, which is another scary part because of, because of you, know, you know, the first clip that, that I saw of him driving it, it. he almost, he almost he loses control, control when he crosses the, the double, yellow double yellow line, and, and it's just it kind of bad, bad, you know, expectation, expectation for the rest of the rest footage of the when watching it. Watching it. Yeah, yeah, if you're not used to driving these Corvettes and sports cars, they're rear, rear wheel drive. Say that three times fast, but anyway, so if you don't, if you're not used to driving them, you can you can spin out very easily, okay? I'm, I'm surprised, and it, it almost happened on film here. So there was two people that I can see on the uh, cam when they get in the car. Uh, the first one that drove it, uh, he was a man, and he is actually the foreman or the supervisor of the service shop. Okay, so so that's why he was able to get away with with doing this because he was the supervisor of the shop. So so he's not you know reporting to anybody, right? 
Wow. Wish we, I want to get the name of this shop. Nobody should go there again. Ever. And if, if this guy's not fired, I mean, he better be fired, right? Which made it even worse. Um, and he was the one that picked up that female passenger. During the second joyride a week later, a different technician took the car out of the dealership's maintenance garage again. I'm not sure it's good to the customer. He's good. That's some scary fast. Fortunately, the car was not damaged during both joyrides. However, after seeing both videos, Parrish's fiance confronted workers at the dealership. She went up there and spoke with the service manager, um, and she showed him the video and everything like that. You know, and I would have went with her if I was him. Right? I would have took off work. I don't care what. I would have went with her. <laughs> I would have. I would have went myself. I don't know why he didn't go, or waited till he, you know, had an opportunity to go with her. But you know, every. Guess everybody's different, right? You know, obviously without the commentary that I had done after the fact. Um, and he seemed, from her description anyway, um, he seemed visibly annoyed at them. But afterwards said that he had no issue with the way they drove the car. The only thing that he was kind of annoyed with is that they picked up a passenger that had no business being in the car. Parrish also pointed out he was the one fearing legal ramifications from this. So, uh, first, first of all, I'm a little confused here because I thought the supervisor was the guy that took out this car. That's, uh, maybe this is uh, another supervisor above the foreman. But anyway, um, he should have been, he should have been furious, uh, that's not just, first of all, they're, they're out joyriding, right? They're not just test driving in these cars. If you're picking up other people, right, and, and gone for who, who knows how long, right? Um, yeah, th th that whole, this whole place is totally screwed up in my opinion. So when they, when they took the, the car out uh, and picked up that female passenger... Um, lawyers and other people have told me that, you know, had they wrecked the car or gotten into any kind of accident while she was in the car and she got injured, um, I would have been on the hook. I could have been named in a lawsuit. Uh, the Can you imagine that? Dropping your car off to, to get something done, right? Then the technicians take it out for a joyride, pick somebody up, get in an accident, and then you you are on the hook for that accident that does not that makes no sense at all and that that law sh i mean that shouldn't even be a law right the, the technician should be on the hook uh, that does that makes no sense whatsoever they could have came after my insurance and then that obviously would have raised my insurance rates for something that i had no part in as far as Parrish knows, the two men were not fired or arrested, and the whole thing still has him upset. They were not fired. I don't care they weren't arrested, but they weren't fired. I don't know. What, what would you got? Would you guys have fired these guys for, for, for doing this? You know, if they took your car out... Um, would you be happy about it, right? Would you want them fired if they took your car out like this and picked people up? Which, it, come on. There's no reason at all they should ever be doing that, right? So it's, it's kind of annoying that I can't trust, you know, the local dealership 10 minutes up the road and I have to spend an hour to go somewhere every time I need work done on the car long term if something happens that's always going to be in the back of my mind like you know what if they damaged something doing what they did and they, you can tell how fast he's going um and the speed limit just said 45 he's he's going at, at least double that and you can just tell by how fast everything's moving for law and crime after hours 
Um, Sam? But anyway, just want to show you guys a little clip. I thought that was very interesting. Hope you guys have a great day. True Crime King, out.